Welcome back to Mark Holmes the Vlog. Thanks for joining in everyone. Hey, you know, it's been a couple of weeks, but it's time to catch up and I want to update you guys on the latest. Now, first of all, I've taken a little bit of time, took a bit of a vacation, needed a well-rested vacation actually. Really did a lot of boating and spent some family time, some time to reflect and refresh and just get all geared back up for the next busy run. Obviously, YouTube, it's a very, very hustle, hustle-based oriented type of activity. So it's just something, we're back at it. We're gonna share with you guys what my haul holidays were all about. We did the family trip, we did some traveling around, enjoyed some time on the water and the boating, but now we have the Jag. And I can't help later, what we're going to do is talk about the maintenance of your F-Type. Now obviously a lot of you guys do your own maintenance, some of you do, some of you don't. And then maybe you have any other supercars. I really do would like to hear from you guys. Some of the things that you use for tools, specialty equipment. So I'm a real firm believer in doing a lot of your own maintenance and upgrades. It actually serves two purposes. Number one, you're obviously, it's a cost savings and that's not really so much the reasoning, but it ultimately is a cost savings. And number two, the big one, of course, is you get to know your vehicle, familiarize yourself. When you take your car into the shop, they drop it off for an oil change, you don't know what goes on. You don't know if you've got leaks or if you've got broken parts in there. You wouldn't know that. And a lot of times the dealers won't necessarily tell you that unless it's severely damaged or ruined or leaking. In which case, half the time, you don't know if you can trust what they're saying anyway and you think it might be an upsell. So often it's nice to be able to do a lot of the work yourself. And so let's talk about that. I'm going to do a walk around and we'll talk some briefly what the Jag and some of the highlights about are things that I'd look at when I'm doing some of my own maintenance and some of the tools that I would consider using using if I don't already have. So let's get into it. First, we'll share you some of the vacation time. We opted out of the Lamborghini Rally just for the sake because the kids all wanted to go boating. It was time that we got the boat unwrapped for the year. We haven't been actually out on the water for about three years. So today's the day. And then we'll talk about what the rest of the week looks like. Oh no, look what we see here. Hi. What do you think there, buddy? It's a baby what is dolphin. That? A baby huh? dolphin. It's a dolphin? <laughs> yeah. A little wakeboarding or what? Marcus, wakeboarding time? Sure. Should I join you? Yeah! Uh-oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, oh my god, I want to go No! That is chilly, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Oh. oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. 30 degree day and sitting in the sun in the boat. came on take a drive down to Banff here with the fam just to spend some time down here in the mountains yeah that's a nice little hangout because there's lots of these outdoor types of activities we do some hiking Hey, maybe check out the gondola. I always like to come do a little window shopping, of course, too. Lots of shops in the area. So it's a lot of fun. These are the things that we do just to break up the monotony of everyday life. Right, buddy? There, there's a lot of popular tourist events as well around here. As you can see, you got waterfalls and you can take it. Obviously, there's tours down there if you want to try, try some of the uh, rafting. Those are some fun things you can do around here as well.
right, so obviously you guys had a taste of what we did on vacation. Really, really good to get away and enjoy some kind of R&R. &R. That's what you need to do once in a while just to sort of stay fresh. But anyway, so here we have the F-Type. And I want to talk about some of the things why I think it's so important not just to do some of your own work. And I don't mean rebuilding engines, but I do mean that what does it hurt to do maybe your own brake jobs or maybe your own oil service? I know there's other channels, Skirt Garage. I know he's done things like upgrades, pulleys and tunes and things like that. That's kind of borderline. Not everybody agrees with doing a tune. I think it's great personally, but that's something that's, you know, some people could take or, or leave. But the reality is maintenance is something you don't want to leave. You don't want to take it for granted. And I think it's very important that we do maintenance. And so that's why I want to talk about it with the F-Type. So there's some basic things I really believe you need to do or need to have in place. First of all, obviously F-Type, you see with the skirts, they're quite low. Obviously, difficult to get cheap jacks under here. I mean, using cheap jacks, you might wind up wrecking the skirts. So you obviously need better jacks, low profile. I use an actual low profile. It's sort of like a floor jack, but it's low profile, so it fits under low cars. I bought it because of the Lamborghini, because I couldn't get a standard floor jack that would fit under the cross member. So this low profile floor jack does that. So you need a decent jack. Now, quick jacks is one option. That's the one where you get the two rails, you slide them under each side, connect the hydraulic hoses to a common pump, and you press the button and up it goes. I don't yet have the quick jacks, but I really do believe that that's a great way to go if you're gonna do a lot of maintenance on your own car. But the reality is, you know, I'll tell you right now, the M5, which I have tucked away in the garage, the E60 M5, great example of a car you really do have to learn how to start doing your own work because it's an older car. I mean, it's an E60, it's, our car is a 2006. So if you take it to the dealer for everything, they're going to start kind of hammering you. And it's going to cost you an arm and three and a half legs, basically just to keep that thing on the road. And that's why it gains such a bad reputation. And the Jaguar could easily fall under that criteria as well. Most Jaguars really do. With the uh, X M5 that we have, we notice it's sprung a little bit of a coolant leak. BMWs, they leak. That's what they do. If they didn't leak, then you'd know there's no fluid in them. So obviously, that's just what it is. So I did realize I did a little troubleshooting. I'm going to have to do some hose upgrades. Now those cars are difficult to work on on a good day, but it's just something that I'm just going to have to tackle. Now the Jaguar and almost any other Euro car is definitely going to have its idiosyncrasies. So I do caution you, don't go beyond your means, make sure you have decent tools, do your research, but that's just something that I do. And I'll just show you some of the basics. With the F-Type here, you know, just pop in the hood here. Very easy car to work on for the most part. I mean, let's face it, it's based loosely based on a five liter V8 Ford engine. Now it is a Jaguar engine, but essentially it's pretty straightforward. It was built by people, it can be disassembled by people. So that's the way I see it. Now, I mean, you look under the hood here and other than a few plastic components, I mean, you got this, this thing comes off. I mean, just look around, have a good look. Sure, it's tight in there, it's packaged very snugly. But I mean, a lot of this stuff is very accessible. Once you start getting some of the plastic out of the way, you got your brake booster there. Don't let all this plastic intimidate you. I basically just start ripping and tearing. These things all spin off quite easily. So out they go. Then you go over here, you've got coolant access as your overflow and obviously pretty easy thing to, to constantly check. Here you have your battery termination, so if you ever have an issue, and I would suggest using a battery tender, always keep a charge on there if your car sits for too terribly long. But taking this plastic off and some of this other plastic, you'll find very quickly that it's quite accessible to the injectors and the spark plugs. Now the beauty of course is um, oil changes, quite straightforward to do on these vehicles. As a matter of fact, a lot of, even a lot of the the techs now at a lot of the uh, service shops don't even drain it out the bottom. Now, I always suggest draining out the bottom. I personally do, but a lot of them will suck it right out of the top because most of these are still wet sumps. So in other words, there's a basket of oil at the bottom of the engine and you stuff a straw down there and you can suck the oil out the top. Pretty easy for most, most service shops to do it that way. I personally like to drain out the bottom because all the sludge goes away. But the beauty is as well on a day-to-day -day basis, check your oil cold before you start the car you can run and check that you go through the dashboard and obviously you can check your oil levels and then you'll know you know whether you've got any kind of oil consumption issues so pretty easy to check your oil change your oil keep a battery tender on there 
And when it comes time to change parts like coolant hoses, maybe change your differential fluid, we know that's one of those things on the F-Type that they talk about that the dealers don't recommend enough of maintenance on the rear differentials and it's, it's electronic and obviously it's one of those things that if you don't maintain it, you're going to burn it up and that's just plain and simple or the relief winds up dumping oil. There's, there's reasons why you want to do some of this maintenance and quite frankly, it's not that difficult. I mean, by the time you arrange, call the dealer, drive your car down to the shop, some of that work could have been done right then and there. So I never let a car, I never let a car intimidate me. I mean, after all, I work on the, any BMWs, the X5, the M5, the Lamborghini, I did some major work on that. Um, the Jaguar, right now, I'm going to sort of rely a little more on the dealer because I have warranty. And that's where I think you got to be careful with the work that you tackle yourself is if you're under warranty that you make sure that you're on the same page as the dealer because if you're doing your own work they might get fussy about that and then there might be a case for them to turn you away if there's a warranty claim and might say well you didn't use the specified filter or our specified oil or what have you so be careful understand those details but once you're past that what I often do once the warranty has gone why commit yourself at least do the basics, do the simple stuff, the stuff that's going to eat your lunch because it's not uncommon for dealers to charge a significant amount of money for some relatively minor maintenance. Now there's a few other pitfalls I need to warn all of you about and that's if you have the carbon ceramic style brakes. Here you can see, because I've got the red calipers, we essentially have the steel brakes. You can pretty much see they're the steel, solid steel brakes. Now of course if you get the yellow calipers, you can actually get carbon ceramic. And I'll tell you right now, so my favorite mechanic, Ed, he basically works on a lot of Ferraris and Lamborghinis and things like that. And Ferrari, they actually use a special sleeve that they put around the brake. So if you're doing any work, for example, maybe front end work, even maybe bleeding your brakes, maybe you're not even replacing your brakes, but maybe you've got the wheel off. If you've got carbon ceramic brakes, I heard that the Ferrari dealer puts a wrap, they put this kind of padded wrap around the disc because even just working in there, if they have a wrench, say even at a little 10 millimeter wrench and you kind of whack and you hit the disc, you wind up a, ch chipping a chunk off the disc, there's five or $10,000 depending on the manufacturer. I know Ferrari or $10,000 per disc, per rotor for carbon ceramic, obviously significant amount of money. So you don't want to be reckless and ruthless if you're working with that. Now a lot of you folks out there, I know I personally ordered some parts. A lot of people now, of course, you know, they'll wind up doing spacers and they'll do other things, maybe wheel changes, maybe summer, winter wheel changes. Whenever you're taking those wheels on and off, if you've got the carbon ceramic, be very, very careful when you're doing any work around it. Don't slam that wheel on there. If you risk chipping the carbon ceramic disc, that means big, big dollars. So that's a little trap for you. So I want to update each and every one of you on what's going on with the F-Type here lately. Obviously it's been a little while since we've talked about it. I've decided to embark on a few modifications. Now I haven't really spilled the beans on that yet, but I can tell you that the first set of mods, I've ordered some parts and I've been waiting already. It's been approximately three weeks, almost four weeks since I ordered them and I just got an email last week to say that they're currently being built and that it's still taking some time. So it takes forever now. So obviously we can all appreciate that. Obviously what's going on around the globe, I mean, first world problems, I suppose, right? <laughs> but at the end of the day, um, that's where we're at. I've, I've ordered some parts and I'm gonna start going down that path and we'll see what you guys think about it. Maybe once I get everything kind of put together, what your take is on it. But that's the whole other part of this equation is getting parts for not just modifications, but for even servicing your cars. And the F-Type, for example, can be very, very difficult. And what I'm finding is getting things in your hands is not as simple sometimes as just phoning the shop. Sometimes you've got to wait a week, two weeks, or sometimes more. And I'm having to wait a long time to get these parts that I want to add to the Jag. So that, unfortunately, is going to be a, get, a, a bit of a waiting game. So you're going to have to stay with me on that. But anyway, let's get moving on. Thanks for joining everyone today. But I would love to hear from each and every one of you guys. What are your thoughts? 
What are your thoughts on maintenance? And do you guys all do your own servicing? I mean, I've been reading a lot of the forums. I'm on a lot of the forums on Facebook and, and whatnot. I, I sort of sit quietly in the background, join in once in a while. I'll say my piece, but it's great to see a lot of you guys are really living passionately. These F-types are truly, truly amazing cars. And I see the passion with everyone. And I, I don't blame you guys. These things are absolutely amazing. I can't help but looking at, I mean, I look back at this every time and it's truly a work of art. I mean, from the hood that flips up the wrong way to the curves and the lines, these cars are great from every angle. The side angle's gorgeous, the back angle's gorgeous. I mean, there isn't a bad line on this car. So I could see the passion in each and every one of you and I'm just honored, truly honored to be part of that community. So let me know, do you guys service your own vehicles? I see some of it online, some of it, probably a lot of you guys just take it into the shop and be done with it. It probably depends on what it is. But I'd love to hear, with, hear how far you guys are willing to go with service and repairs and maintenance on your F-Type. I'd love to hear your thoughts on whether we should be working on these cars ourselves and being thrifty, and if it's just more about learning the car and becoming one with the car, or if you're more of the purists like the Ferrari owners clubs. Ferrari owners don't touch their cars. They don't even change their tires in most cases. They just take it to the dealer, and that's just the way that culture is in the Ferrari world. Lamborghini, wings, exhaust, flames, noise, awesome. Jaguar, I find somewhere in the middle. So what are your guys' thoughts? Do your own work or take it to the dealer? Drop me a line. I'd love to hear from each and every one of you. Hope to see you guys real soon. Catch you then. Bye-bye.